Well, everyone, thanks for tuning in, and I am so, so, so blessed and excited to have Jungle George and the iconic Running Man producer, educator, and brother, father in the house, Mr. Carl Bradshaw. Welcome. Thank you for having me, and let me say a big... Welcome to Canada for having me also and bring greetings from Jamaica. I'm here just to present a program, but I'll tell you more about it down the line. Okay. Um, you are here promoting a documentary that you're working on, and I saw bits and pieces of it um, on YouTube. And give us the title in your own words. Okay, before I give you the title, this is really a rough cut of a, what do you call a, a trailer. Mm -hmm. It's called Jamaica Through the Eyes of Carl Bradshaw. I'm, I'm, it's my, I'm giving you my Jamaica. Yes. I'm not sure if it's going to be everybody's Jamaica, mm -hmm. but it's my Jamaica. And um, this is just one of a series we plan to do. Mm -hmm. So um, for this event, we're going to be showing Third World Cup, mm -hmm. and then uh, after that, we're going to be giving a little sneak peek into Jamaica from the heads of Carl Bradshaw. But um, it's it's a it's a rough cut. Mm -hmm. It's rough in many ways. <laughs> well, yeah, um, Jamaica is. There's parts of Jamaica that is pretty rough. Um, I saw St. Mary's, I think, today on YouTube. And, you know, you're driving through and you're describing things. And, and those are things someone like me who's Canadian would know. And from someone that's Jamaican that lived it, that filmed it, produced it, wrote about it, been a part of it, and still a part of it. So I think that's, like, we need that. Like, there's reality shows all over TV having talking about vain things this is something that <laughs> you know what i mean this is serious you know and it's serious um because what you're gonna get you're gonna get a taste of jamaica mm -hmm. because a lot of jamaicans that have migrated o overseas haven't gotten the chance to come back because of sometime financial situation mm -hmm. sometimes they just don't come back yeah so this is just to give you a little prips <laughs> how sweet Jamaica still is and how beautiful and how warm. Mm -hmm. And it's and um, sometimes they would like to paint Jamaica as a super violent country. <clears throat> but it's not like that. Jamaica has many dimensions, many layers. Mm -hmm. And when you get to understand or to come to Jamaica or to know the Jamaicans, we're not just in one bag. Exactly. Yeah. And I, and I think that, because um, I, I remember growing up here as a kid, and I remember being Caribbean from my parents' side, and we were listening to ska. Like, we had our own Caribbean. We had Calypso, and we had ska. And then reggae creeped in. And when the harder they come broke ground, it was like a freedom, a, a revelation that we could all meld together because we have sound now it's not just you know funk and disco <laughs> you know what i mean and, and and um i remember seeing um the harder they come and i couldn't understand a, almost a thing because <laughs> i had a few jamaican friends growing up but it's different when it's in your face on screen and people are talking patwa and um it was really cool because then I broke ground, Bob Marley came out, and f more movies came out, like Countryman and a few more down the road. And you were in The Heart of They Come. And I'm, I'm in 98% of all the locally produced Jamaican films. Wow. Plus, I'm not just an actor. I'm a, I, I, I conceptualize mm -hmm. I, ideas. Mm -hmm. Well, you did that for your role in The Heart of They Come. 
um, the two pre the two directors came to you with an idea, and you created your role, and it was a very powerful role. Definitely, because at the time, I was a teacher at Excelsior High School. Wow. I, I taught at school. Mm -hmm. I'm, a, I'm a, what's called a kinesiologist or a physical scientist. Okay. From the sense that I am, I appraise the human body from a mechanical point of view. Okay. And, and so I was in sports. I was um, head of the P department. Mm -hmm. And I, I represented um, Jamaica in track and field athletics. So I had a field I know, for sports. And you know, so um, it, my involvement within the the arts and mm -hmm. the Jamaican experience goes way back from. I started in 1968. Wow. And it was that time at Excelsior High School that there was a lady called Evan Jones Brewster mm -hmm. that was um, the drama teacher. Mm -hmm. And um, she was the one actually who realized that something was different about this this dude. <laughs> 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 and so um, Perry Enzel mm -hmm. was the gentleman actually who came with the idea for how they come. Mm -hmm. We got together along with Trevor Rohn mm -hmm. and myself, and it blossomed from there. And um, it is now one of the top ten films for the last hundred years. It is rated among wow. that. Yeah, because I saw that on online when I was researching you because I saw a lot of the movies, but I didn't know some of the background. And, you know, um, Island Records, um, Chris Blackwell, like he was into the music and he was into the film and I didn't know how much power that he had behind it. But you guys stood out the most, like, although, you know, they had... No, he, Chris Blackwell wasn't actually in the film. No, he, he, but he, but he funded, funded, he funded parts of the, the film. film. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah, what he I'm was one of the investors. Yeah. You know? And here you are in Canada now. Um, this is this 2016? Yeah, like, like that. I'm just looking back at the time. And what's great about Jamaica, not just about the music, they are actually creating film festivals. Sh Cheryl Lee Ralph has started a, a film festival that's been iconic in Jamaica for. Um, just like we have the Toronto Film Festival, Jamaica has a film festival. But many festivals, many film festivals. Because what is happening now is that um, a lot of um, private, that University of West Indies, mm -hmm. um, Barbara Blake, mm -hmm. has um, the Reggae Film Festival. Mm -hmm. you know, and and um, sometimes we just have. A, not really a festival, but workshops, bringing writers, you know, mm -hmm. groups and all that. Because it's, it's, and it's becoming synonymous, and, and which is a good thing to boost up the economy of Jamaica. Of course, because you know. film, films are, are most valuable mm -hmm. for our nation. Mm -hmm. Not just to record down um, your history, but to use, use it as, a, as an economic tool. Exactly. So, right? so um, why did you come up with... Um, the name, like how did you come up with the name and um, thought about doing Jamaica Through Your Eyes? Okay. My daughter mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> came up the, with the idea mm -hmm. that we should do something mm -hmm. Jamaica Through the Eyes of Carl Bradshaw. Mm -hmm. Because at the time, when Jungle George and myself was going through, mm -hmm. we were just following me doing different parts of kingdom, like a travel dog. Yeah. In reality, because um, it's, it's, it's rough. It's not like, say, um, we... It's, like it's a video blog, like yeah. people put blogs, like, here I am, I'm going to take a bungee jump, and they jump, and they video, uh, but right. it's through their eyes and right. their experience. Exactly and, so. Yeah. So um, this is, that is why I say it's, it's, it's very rough. It was shot with one camera, mm -hmm. one direction. Mm -hmm. It captured... Um, a lot of what is necessary. Mm -hmm. And then now, for me now, I go off into different tangents of the Jamaican experience. Okay. Both from the music, both from the cultural side, mm -hmm. both from the film side, both from the religious aspect. And then I will probably go off into my own headspace. <laughs> but, headspace um, is good. Yeah, but... Um, what what um 
who is interested could mm -hmm. probably pass by mm -hmm. and have a look. Because it will be over a two-day period. Yes. It starts today mm -hmm. and tomorrow in, in, um, here in Toronto. In Toronto at the Adelaide Hall, uh, which is yes. on Adelaide Street if anybody wants yes. to drop by. And it goes over to... Uh, 250 Adelaide. No, the next... Where the next place we're playing on Sunday? Oh, that's at the ACCA in Hamilton. That's the yes. um, Afro, or the, I think it's Afro Canadian Caribbean Center mm -hmm. in yeah. Hamilton, which is that's going to Sunday. be a good show. So it's going to be three, three, um, three presentations. And it's not just, um, we're going to show the third World Cup, then the little snippet from Eyes of Carl Bradshaw, mm -hmm. and then we have a musical. Session. Yeah, um, Brigadier J um, Kinsley, yeah, yeah, he actually comes on our shows. He, he's with um, yes, DJ yeah. Chocolate sometimes. And, and also uh, the ja Japanese sound system. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's just what is called a visit, a, a, a joyful visit to Canada to show my face yeah. and also to experience Canada. And, and what are you experiencing so far? You said well, you've been here a few times yeah, over the years. Experience Canada mm -hmm. at, a, at, a, at a different level. Mm -hmm. What I like with Canada, it's not as fast paced as a lot of the. Other, like Northern, like the uh, United North States. North America. Yeah. And it has what it's called landmass. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's wide, it's not overpopulated. And it just has a, a, a different kind of. Um, a vibe nature to it. Mm -hmm. Some say it. I was telling Jungle George I was coming down from his house mm -hmm. and, I, and we, I, we, I just saw just agricultural development non-stop. Yeah. So I was saying to him, wow, our culture is on steroids here. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I like that. And, and, and isn't that um, maybe from your lens too of how you see Jamaica like before we should all leave this earth, we should leave something that comes through our eyes. Like, I love music, and it's been with me from a young child, and so I like to play music, I like to discover music, but I also like to discover culture. And if you're not Jamaican, you don't know. You know, they'll see me with locks and say, oh, she just probably smokes weed and does this and mm -hmm. this and this and this. And they don't know maybe that I work with people that with or have mental health and that I love humanity. But, I, but my spirit loves arts and culture because that makes us up. And then the beauty behind it. Of course, because um, within what we do as um practitioners mm -hmm. of, the, of this field, whether it's um, film, radio, television, commercial, mm -hmm. print media, magazines. Mm -hmm. We're 2% of the world population that has to keep 98% informed and in check. I like that. So, so we are, um, as practitioners, are, are super valuable mm -hmm. to the human development and to keep them informed. Mm -hmm. And in line. Two um, later movies that really are synonymous is um, Dance Hall Queen. You you were um, in that as well as Third World Cop. Yes. And the idea behind Third World Cop is just like taking the Jamaican accent and putting it in a North American film. It was well scripted, and the intrigue like had me off my seat. Because I was saying, and coming out of Jamaica, like not that it couldn't happen. Yeah, but um, but but just you how real we put energy into that. Yeah, we put, um, a lot of professionalism. Although, in in, in making films in Jamaica, mm -hmm. um, our budgets are tiny compared of to course. North America. When they were spending three hundred and fifty million dollars, we were spending twelve million dollars. Mm -hmm. But the end product has to be just as competitive. Mm -hmm. As your three hundred fifty million, yes, yeah. and um, and my film and style is as quick as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. So I will budget a feature film 
for more than 20 days. Mm -hmm. And you have to... So that's pretty intense. Super intense. Because when you see Third World Cop, it's like, I, I thought it would shot over time because it, 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 the way it, and the way it climaxed. It, it condenses and it, time. It, and it just yeah. gripped you right there. Um, different parts in the movie. I was like, wow. Wow. I've watched it a few times. And Dancehall Queen, I l what I love about that is um, maybe the Westerners, because I don't want to include or, or just put people out there, think that Dancehall Queens just go there to, to, to look afresh. You know what I mean? Like, but the, here, here's this a woman that wants to do her best to win a competition to feed her family. You know, like, and, and some people don't think those things are real. They, they, they look at, it's just like seeing Kim Kardashian. We don't know much about her. But she has money, but. Dance Old Queen, actually, when that movie came out, mm -hmm. it, 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 it started to influence world fashion. Mm -hmm. It gave the female a kind of liberty. Mm -hmm. You know, so the, f the, the, the female personality got a, a big boost. Mm -hmm. It was the first digital film that was shot in the world, Dance of Queen. Wow. Um, and um, it was shot on a home video camera. Are which you serious? Which they say it couldn't be done. I would not I would never have known that. But um, but I, we had modified the camera too, mm -hmm. to fit what we're doing. Mm -hmm. Because what we did, we put in, put on a 16 millimeter eyepiece. Okay. For, um, for the visuals. Mm -hmm. But this was the first digital film. I came up with the concept, I produced it, I acted in it. Yes, I remember. Third World Cup, same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I directed the writers what to write, mm -hmm. how to present it, I named the characters. So um, you know, it's, it's a lot of work. And, and, and it's, it's, it has to be a love, because here you are also, um, I'm going to call you a physicist because you, you, the mechanics of the body, but you're also doing the spirit and the mind and, and trying to incorporate that in, in visuals. Well, what is going to be happening over these three presentations? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to know a really hardcore look mm -hmm. and presentation. Mm -hmm of the human person. Wow. Which might be controversial. But it um, might be. Um, but um people judge for themselves mm -hmm. if what I'm saying fits their bill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but because I'm looking at I'm looking at life now as something that we can improve. Mm -hmm. Yes we can. I'm looking at the human family as a unit yet, yet and bond together. Mm -hmm. If we don't do that, then we're going to destroy ourselves. Exactly. And um, they speak about the meek. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, who is the meek? Who? Who is a dangerous word? Mm -hmm. Because that who is the meek, but what is the meek? Is the, meek? Yeah. The, the weakest link in the life chain is the human person. Of course. The weakest link. The weakest link. So if it comes down to crunch time, we'll be the first to disappear. So we're not careful in what we're doing, then the meek will actually inherit the hurt. Yes. And that's rat, lizard, mm -hmm. cockroach, flies, mm -hmm. mosquito. Mm -hmm. They are the meek. They are the meek. We have to work to fulfill the purpose of the human person. Why? We're here. And that's our purpose. To, 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 to be amongst, have compassion for all, because we, we are supposed to be all created equal, but we're just not. We're on different levels. We're created equal, but we look at systems, politics, economics, culture, mm -hmm. religion, play their part in destroying the human lifestyle. Yeah. 
I don't understand too much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's Uncle George, maybe we can hear from you. Okay. You guys have been friends for 15 years. Yeah. And you're taking, you're enjoying and being a part of a journey. Yeah, I'm seeing things that uh, very few people get to see mm -hmm. in my, uh, I actually lived with Carl for a couple years and he has a, a room for me in the back of his house and he has uh, an alligator called Wally. Really? In the moat. Mm -hmm. And uh, nobody believed him when he'd say that. Mm -hmm. It's a crocodile. Could, it's a crocodile, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Uh, Canadian thing. Yeah, so one day uh, two young children run up and says, there he is. And it was like a dinosaur swimming out the back of his house. Uh -uh. Yeah. So he has that and he has a guard dog named Gangster. And that watches our front door and the alligator makes sure nobody troubles in the backyard there. So it's into the rough stuff like that you see. You know? mm -hmm. But he's just talking about the force of nature. Mm -hmm. Human nature and yeah. nature in itself. And it's not extinct, but it, it, it is so convoluted now. Well, Jamaica's mm -hmm. raw, you know, like you have to be careful in Jamaica if you go into the jungles. Mm -hmm. You have to have a guide and you have to have what's called orientation. Even to go as a Canadian to Jamaica, you need to be orientated. Mm -hmm. Just don't go there and just walk out. You think you're just going to walk down the street. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, the poverty is, is so intense in some places and the wealth is so intense in another right way. across the street. Mm -hmm. it's, it's incredible the, the, uh, how you're, you can walk from a, 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 a hut into a billion dollar home and just and it's sometimes as a Canadian it gets a little in Canada our wealth is spread so far yeah. we don't really feel it you know but those the poor people in Jamaica feel it and some of them have work so hard they do work you know hard. like um, I have a um, couple of women that um, that are iconic to me that I've grown up with and watched their family grows and you kind of interconnect but just the way they even work with here in Canada to send back home because I have this one lady she she comes from a huge family she's the one that came here and in and brought her brothers and sisters and some of them stayed here and some of them are in the US but they still collaborate and try to send things mm -hmm. and work together and work together and 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 then they send things and sometimes it doesn't get to the people that they send it to because of all the the bureaucracy and as a babylon system is everywhere it's not, you know what i mean well carl taught me something really good in the film he said um i don't like it a ghetto i don't like that word that's a negative word he likes his community or mm -hmm. his village mm -hmm. and, and we should get rid of that word that was created by hitler back oh, for the po yeah he I created the, that. yeah the polish mm -hmm. ghetto because Word taken to itself, flesh, and becomes real. Mm -hmm. The word ghetto is a very destructive word. Because <coughs> when, when the word ghetto crept into Jamaica, then the whole social structure mm -hmm. started to change. We started to have uptown and downtown. Mm -hmm. You know, the people started to isolate themselves. Mm -hmm. Because um, you know, those are ghetto people, uptown. So the word ghetto is really a super destructive word. I never thought of it that it, way. It, 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 it wasn't into the dictionary. It mm -hmm. crept into the dictionary after the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. but, so it's your village, your district, mm -hmm. your community, mm -hmm. your parish, mm -hmm. your county, mm -hmm. your country. Yeah. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Ghetto is a word that is designed to distract. To distract and to divide. It's, it's, it's one of the cruelest presentation within language that has hit the human family. And 90% of the world does not realize that. I didn't realize it in your perspective until you just mentioned it, because I'm so used to saying it, because um, it's, it, it's, it's been synonymous and, and highlighted I'm almost 60, but even as a child in the, the early 60s and early, um, early 70s, everything was ghetto. Like, you're ghetto, you're dressing ghetto. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just becomes part of it. And, and it's nice that you just address that to give me food for thought and say... It's called subconscious control. Mm -hmm. So you, you start to use it and you start to live it. 
that's the danger. Mm -hmm. And then you become it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what um, impoverishes um, a lot of our youth because they don't want to be ghetto. <laughs> you know, they got to do one step up to not be part of that. And if it didn't exist now, then you wouldn't have that problem. Yeah. If the word. Yeah. And, and, and the, um, the hate and the violence, I think it, it, it interconnects a lot of other violence, like hate and racism. And it, put, it put family against family. Yeah. It put schoolmate against schoolmate. It put class against class. It put color against color. Mm -hmm. And for the future, like, I'm, I'm just interested to see, like, what could be next in your film career or in your production? Okay, um, I shouldn't speak about that because it's not really easy. Mm. But um, my next... Like like the documentary, would you actually edit it together and make it a film documentary and maybe put it on a different platform? What we probably do will make it um, more like um, episodes. Mm -hmm. Maybe That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Episodes. Yeah. If we have, if we have, if we get, if we have the proper funding. Mm -hmm. Because um, funding is very nice. Although our film style is what we call guerrilla filming. Okay. That means that you have to multitask. Yes, of course. If you're on the set, you can't just be one dimensional. Yeah. Because our budget is small, and for filming like this, you can't take a crowd. No. Right. It, 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 because it, it's not like you're, you're you have things set up. Mm -hmm. You're just going through and capture things. As you go along, and it's sort of like the music. Like, as um, when I listen back to like some of the music of the seventies, when um, they had Studio One and those kind of sounds, you're thinking like, and I, you hear it and you say like, how many musicians are playing on that? But then when you're looking back at some film footage, like the history of Jamaican music, and you're seeing like some guys playing the bass. <laughs> He, then he stops and he's and, and they're recording pieces of music and then they, they, they layer it together and just having the ear and the, 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 the spirit to put together such profound music. The one draw. The one draw. That's what <laughs> yeah. it, you know? Yeah, man, that's how it is. Um, because we as an island have to, Miss Lude say, turn your hand and make fashion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that. Mm -hmm. So, if you're one dimensional, then you're going to be stuck in gear. Yeah. Because um, there's not enough opportunity for most people. Mm -hmm. I'm fortunate that I had a chance to be able to do something to give back. Yeah. But um, it's, very, it, it's going to be very difficult, especially now that we're in this whole technological mm -hmm. advancement. For you to be one dimensional and survive, you have to be able to multitask. Definitely, because I'm just learning. Like I like doing radio now. I'm not using CDs or records. Like taking like five bags with me now. I can put it on my laptop. But now that I got it on the laptop, then there's Facebook, Twitter, <laughs> Instagram, <laughs> Mixcloud, this thing, this thing, and I'm learning as I go on along. But I'm not giving up because. Um, I think it's so important to have these kinds of mediums to communicate to people that it's a, a one love thing. It's not, we're not coming with hate. It's we're a not family here. situation. You know, and that's yeah. how the family grows, you know, and whether it's Jamaica or Barbados, where my family are from, I mean, we need that and we need that identity to just to, to show. Definitely. So um, before um, I get out, I'm just going to. If, you, if uh, you're, you, you people in radio land or television land, if you're listening, if you want to pop by one of the venues, it would be good. And uh, for, the, for the one in Toronto, it's just $10. Mm -hmm. And for... The ACCA is $20. Yes, but, but at $20, you, you get... Food. Some little finger food and all yeah, that. And uh, it's Facebook driven. We've uh, networked through Facebook mostly. Okay. So if you go to the Facebook page, Carl Bradshaw Events, mm -hmm. it's a big write up about him and it takes you to links to other parts of the net where you can see background things and what's going on. So get on there and pass it around. Let him know he's here. 
Much love. Mm -hmm. I mean, what a blessing to meet someone as iconic as you. And and for me, seeing like my first glimpse of you in the harder they come, wouldn't think in my older years <laughs> now that I get to meet someone mm -hmm. iconic as you. So, you it's know. It's a magnet, man. It's the, it's, it's the what you call that spiritual connection that sometimes draws the real people together. Amen. I like that. So this is Diva D. You, you're, this is Ear Candy. This is my friend and father, visionary, Mr. Carl Bradshaw, and our partner here, partner in crimes. I was, <laughs> I was, I was, <laughs> Jungle George. Jungle George. Um, George Chait. And I thank them for coming by uh, Radio Region today and honoring us and giving us vision. And don't forget to check out Eyes Through Jamaica. Jamaica. Through uh, through Jamaica uh, Carl Bradshaw. There's clips of it online on YouTube, but if you really want to come down there and you get to meet him, which is beautiful, it's um, today and tomorrow at Adelaide Hall. That's 250 Adelaide, Toronto. And uh, Third Court World Cup will be showing at 7 p.m. And at 9 p.m., Jamaica Through the Eyes of Carl Bradshaw will be um, featuring. And, um, and we have a short Q&A. Yeah, little short Q&A. People would love to, you know, I, I'm pretty sure um, you've seen him in many movies. Um, he has so many. To, first, The Harder They Come, Third World Cup, Dance Hall Queen, The Mighty Quinn. Um, Countryman, um, Club Paradise, Club Paradise. There's uh, so many. Yeah, yeah. Third and, World Cop and Third World Cop. You know, um, that's iconic and synonymous. And um, do you yep. have something to tell the young people that might be listening in or um, have a vision and just never thought about it? Never give up. Follow the positive spirit. Because the yin and the yang, you have positive and negative vibration. One positive weighs 100 negative. One negative weighs 100 positive. So you might fall down along the way trying to get to your vision. The key about that, dust yourself off and start all over again. But never give up. And for the youngsters, be patient, be friendly, and at all times, if possible, be at peace with yourself. Amen. I think that's that's a really, really good. Mr. Bradshaw, Jungle George. Big up Toronto. Much love. Much love, see? <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.